<clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hey, are you ready for the word tonight? Uh, I am so stirred in my heart about what God's doing. And uh, if you didn't know this, God is doing some stuff on the earth. And he's doing more than you think that he is. Uh, That's just an announcement. He's doing more than you think that he is. And God is up to a lot of good. Matter of fact, he has you here on this earth for a purpose. We're going to talk a little bit about that and why, even just tonight, why I'm so, been so stirred about even this next coming week and Wednesday nights and the way that some of these things have been um, put together, uh, really because this is a time where we put to, to work together and become doers of the word, not hearers only. And, and truly, this is a picture um, <clears throat> of a prayer in my heart that I had been, I had shared with the staff a, a, probably about a month and a half ago. I just have been asking the Lord to sh- that the, all of the church would push. Have you ever, have you ever tried to push a car? Up, you know, that ran out of gas, or maybe, maybe, maybe you haven't. Maybe have you ever tried to lift a heavy piece of furniture, and maybe you didn't have your husband there, or if you're a lady, or you didn't have somebody that was real strong there, and so um, you actually had to really put it to it, and and then you did, and it didn't move that much, and then you look to the other person, and you go, "Are you even lifting?" <laughs> right. And that's kind of a frustrating thing when you're like, and you're like, you know, it's going to be a lot of work. And you just wonder if, and and there's, so there's this prayer in my heart, just like, what would it look like? What would it be if the church, his church, the body of Christ is just, is a church that everyone's pushing? You know, that it's just like, it's just, it's amazing how, how easy it is. There's a big cement table right outside those windows right there. And it's really heavy. If you ever try to grab it, one guy and the other guy, it's basically not ha- hardly happening. But we, the other night, uh, we were in socks and we had mopped the floors and we had the worship team, uh, guys and girls, and there was like eight or nine of them. It was like, all right, one, two, three. And it was like, okay, I guess we're just walking because it just picked right up. It was just a few pounds, and it just, phew. so um, before we jump into, anyway, so that reason why I'm so excited in my heart about this is I just really believe uh, there's the messages in this house um, that, that are going to be taken, in a sense, worked on and applied. Yeah. And sometimes, and then I'll tell you, that's the greatest desire of my heart, is to see that we be a body that is doing the word and, and carrying that message beyond these four walls, that truly, that you and I are being equipped uh, for the works of ministry, the works of service. Matter of fact, that's why you and I are here. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 13, it, it, said, it tells us that David served his generation, and then he fell asleep. And that's what your and my purpose really is, to serve our generation. And so um, before we jump into uh, tonight's, the word tonight, I got a couple announcements. Um, number one, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, Brother Nick Kin. You don't know who he is, but he's the first one uh, that I ever prayed with someone to receive Jesus with. I went out on evangelism when I was a teenager, a uh, middle school kid. We went downtown Minneapolis and, and got on the bus, and we went down there. And he was just made it seem so easy. All you had to do was love somebody. Like, that's the best way I'd explain it, that, that he just, he just loves, loves somebody and, and told him of the good news, man. Just tell him the good news, man. I, I, I'm talking like he, I, I remember anyway. And so now he's, uh, here I am, 40-something years old, and I, from, you know, 30, almost 30 years ago, and here he's coming to, to minister here, not this weekend, but next weekend. And I'm telling you, he's an evangelist. He's prayed with uh, close to a million people probably to receive Christ, and no joke. Um, and it's just, it's amazing. So he's going to be here Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and we're doing an evangelism outing. You know, maybe you've struggled to share your faith. Tonight's message will be helpful, uh, for sharing your faith. Um, really, really, really helpful, I believe. And not in some way that's just like, you know, um, I don't know. I'd say like where you got to do evangelism to share your faith but just where it's natural, like wherever it is. But um, anyway, so uh, w- Friday night at 7 o'clock, uh, and then we're going to go out and go street evangelizing. And then Saturday at 1045, 
and then we're going to go out and go street evangelizing, and then uh, we're going to go, we're going to have Sunday morning, the regular service at 10, and so on Friday and Saturday, there is child care, not child, children's ministry, child care. If you text that you're going to come, and you're going to bring your number of children, you know, I need three children's spots, you know, so Man, this is about just, hey, I want to be equipped. You know, the Bible talks about in Ephesians that God sets gifts in the body to equip us uh, for works of ministry. And I think of a lot about when the, the, this comes, it truly is equipping like armor, like in Ephesians chapter 6. There's an equipment. There's a, a hosting, you know, that you and I get when we, when we receive from these gifts. So you'll want to be here. I know it's like oh, only a week and a half away, two weeks away here. Um, but I'll tell you, it'll, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. In the same way that you made it here tonight, did you know it's no easy feat? Sometimes we don't, we don't hear how, how important and how valuable and how pleased the Lord is with, with you. The, the fact that you came on a Sunday. I know this today's Wednesday. But, like, you got up. You brushed your teeth and your hair, and you went to church. You could have done a lot, anything you wanted, but you, de- say, you declared, this is what I want. And tonight, Wednesday night, you're declaring, this is what I want. God, I want you. I want you. I want you. I want to know you more, but I want, I want to know you, and I want you to work through me. And so um, that's, that's what's going on. And then this weekend... Actually, what we're going to have uh, a few uh, a few months ago uh, at Frontline, we had a, there was a message uh, called "No Calm, No Bomb," and it was about communication. And uh, really, it was about guys communicating and, and just family communication. Really, a message. And I just was like, "God, that was gonna we're going to use that message when we get into our family series." And um, and so we started whole family last week. And Joe Costillo is going to be ministering this weekend. We got some handouts and some things. It's going to be really uh, you're going to be blessed by it. Um, and it's on communication. It's on communication. So I just believe we're going to hear it. Uh, we're going to receive it, and we'll be doers of it. So um, anyway, that's this weekend. So you'll want to be here for that. As well, I know I will be. So um, let's jump in to the word tonight. We're in part two uh, of God loves me, and it's so important that you know that God loves you. It's so 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 important that you know that God loves you. But not only that you know, quote unquote, God loves you, but that you have a Father that you would know who He is. Now there is this passage in Exodus. Where Moses, how many of you remember Moses? He's in the wilderness. He'd, he'd already you know, tried to deliver Israel, and he, ran, and he didn't work out so good by him doing it by himself. How many of you have ever tried to do what God wants you to do without God's help? It's kind of discouraging, isn't it? And then you kind of don't do it again. And then you just kind of walk away. And it might be years before you ever step out and pray or step out and try to do the will of God again. And God found him in the wilderness after he had abandoned really his call and hid why God placed him here on the earth to deliver, to bring a message of, del- of, of truly of deliverance to the children of God, who God had a covenant with, but yet they didn't know that. And, and so God finds him, and this is in Exodus 3, 13 through 16. I didn't give you these verses. These just popped up in my heart um, as, I, as we were worshiping. I was like, and I, had, I was thinking about these earlier. And, uh, and, and so here he is. And he's like, uh, Lord. Well, actually, put, pull it up there. Let's, let's go there. I have it on my phone. But let's, let's go there. Exodus chapter 3, um, 13 through 16. And this is, I love what he says. He says this. He said, suppose I go. Exodus 13, or 3, 13. He says this. He says, suppose I do what you ask me to do, Lord. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, verse 13. Suppose I go. You ever been that, done that to the Lord? Suppose, suppose, I, suppose I did what you asked me to do. Suppose I did what you set me here on this earth to do. Suppose. Let's just suppose Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Just, let's just suppose I, I was going to do that. Let's just suppose I was not, bought with a price and I'm going to glorify you. You know, um, Okay. Let's just suppose. How do I do that? And if, if I'm doing that just in my life, but also to, you've given to each and every person the ministry of reconciliation or to be reconciled back to God, what does that look like? What do I tell somebody? So here's what he says. He says, suppose, 
Like he's questioning whether or not he's going to go and try to do what he was set on earth to do. Have you ever been there? You, are, you maybe saw somebody hurting, and God, saw, God brought that before your eyes because you're supposed to do something about it. But you and I don't know really what to do. We've tried to step out on our own before. I don't even know what to do. So let's suppose I was going to step out and try to do something that was bigger than me. What am I supposed to tell them? Suppose I go to the world. Suppose I go to my coworkers. Suppose I go to my mom, my sons, my friend, my cousin, my aunt, my uncle, my grandpa. Suppose I was to go and say to them, the God of your father, said, God sent me to you. I just I saw you over here. And I just felt like the Lord wanted me to come talk to you. This is what's happening. So, so suppose I did what you're prompting me to do. Um, and, and they ask me, okay, what? Wh- wh- who? What, what, what you say, God, okay, God, the God of who? The God, God, who's God? Because maybe this person might be bitter. Maybe you have some experience. Maybe they have some awareness of all that hasn't happened. Maybe in the church there's a lot of awareness of all that you prayed for and you didn't see. Or blah, 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 blah. Just you have a lot of experience. You have a lot of awareness that causes you and I to hope less. Again, we're, picking, we're gonna pick up where we, where we left off last week, okay? What is the name and what shall I tell them? What am I supposed to tell? The, like, what am I going to tell? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Like, what does that even mean? I mean, people use that, the, that, you know, blankety blank, right? Next verse. God said to Moses, tell him I am. I am who I am. I am, you could say it this way, I am. You know what? He is. He, what, what he is what? He is the existing, really what this means, the existing one without any limits, who's unlimited, He is. He just is. Unlimited, existing one. This is what you are to say to them. The unlimited. There's nothing beyond his reach, beyond his ability. Who was, who is, I am, has sent me to you. Okay, next verse. I think that that was it. Um, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. So again, this was on Sunday, and, and what we're doing on Wednesday nights, we're talking a little bit of Sunday's messages, and we're taking a little bit deeper, a little bit more rehearsed, chew it again, and putting the application to it. You know, at the beginning of Sunday, I talked a lot about it's really important that you and I know that we are a child of God. And so this is our God, the God of, the God of your fathers, your fathers, Abraham, your father. Your father of the faith, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's talking about your family tree because you've been grafted in according to Galatians chapter 3. And he says, um, he sent me to you, and this is his name. What is? The existing one. The one who is. The one who has, has no limits. All right? And it says, and this is, shall be uh, that, the name you shall call me from generation to generation, or let me say it to, to right now. This is who you're supposed to tell the people who sent you. Now, let's go to Ephesians, not Ephesians, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I, I pray that we hear this differently this, uh, tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, 6, and I know I didn't give you this one either, but maybe you can quote this one. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's a song. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him, there's a couple components here, must believe that he exists. Now, if you were to read this in the King James or you, to read, you would see, or the New King James, you, you would say that he is. So he's actually declaring here the same thing that we just read in Exodus. He said, anyone that comes to God, now, without faith, it's impossible to please God because you can't have faith if you think God is limited. Because you won't trust 
You can't trust his word because his word compared to that, ooh, like we size him up. And this again, we're talking about well, last week. We talked about the centurion and how he was a man of great faith. He said, "I've not seen faith like this in all of Israel." And we we kind of laid this like maybe imagination, bring back uh, your yourself into the scriptures and see that the centurion was somebody in of Rome, of Rome uh, in this place in Israel to keep the peace and to establish Roman rule. And so anytime somebody would be famous or popular, right, keeping the, he knew who Jesus was. He, when, when, when there was hurt in his family, he knew where to run. And why did he know where to run? And why was he confident of that? He had a hope. He had a picture. He had watched, studied the character of Jesus himself, through his, all of his people underneath of him, said, hey, make sure you're watching Jesus over there. I'm going to go over here. Make sure you, anything that goes on, make sure you send a report to me. This is what's going on with the centurion. And he said, he comes to Jesus and said, all, all you need to do is speak the word. He had in within him great faith, which was, now faith is, Hebrews chapter 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of what you're hoping for. It's the evidence of things not seen. If you don't have hope, you can't have the faith. There's a lot of the word of God, but if you and I don't have a picture that God really is good or that he loves me, then what he says is just like, yeah, I don't know if I believe that. So here he says now, go back to Hebrews eleven six. Now he says, now without faith, it's impossible to please God because... Uh, he that co comes to God must believe that he exists or he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So these are huge things. That he is, and, and I want to read this out of the Greek. I want to read this, the word he exists or the word that would be translated exist or is or it could be translated a lot of different ways. It, it says this. Um, it's emi, E-I-M-I. And it's the, the Greek verb, which ex, I love that, expresses being, am or is. Am or is. It's a, it's a, it's the, it's a verb. It's am or is. It's an active word. Okay? And he says this, and it's counter, uh, con, it conveys this, um, straightforward being, existence without any limits. Am, is. Straightforward being, existence, i.e., without any limits or without any explicit, like there's no limits. So anyone, but you must believe that God, he has no limits and he rewards. Well, that's kind of like God can do. Is there anything to, with God, nothing is impossible. And I believe the church believes that situations are impossible a lot. And so we say, suppose I go to them what am I going to do? Well, you're not. He is. If you will, if you will what? Believe that he is. What? Unlimited. Existing. Ex straightforward being without limits. And is a rewarder. So we're talking tonight about hope. And you know, we, we, we're talking, we talked about the title of the message last uh, week was God loves me. And this is what it's so important. If we're ever going to do this on this wall right here, if we're ever going to preach Jesus, now I'm not telling you to tell a story about Jesus. I, I wanted to find preach Jesus, to declare with authority Jesus, to declare with authority the good news. If we're ever going to do that, we're going to have to know that He who I am, the existing one without limits, loves me, and he is a rewarder. If I'm ever going to do that, otherwise what happens is, is uh, what I have to share is kind of like an idea. It's kind of like, uh, well, that's just my faith. It's personal. It's private. It, it, it has enough power to only, I don't even know what, honestly. It's a form. It's a form, and it's honestly quite wearing. And maybe you've been there before where you're just kind of like, just kind of tired of this. Like, I just feel like I'm going through the motions. Anybody ever been, just felt like you've been going through the motions? Can I tell you, it's just because you're hopeless. Your hope is less. 
So like if you could think of your, uh, uh, like a fuel tank, instead of it saying, you know, fuel, it's hope, you just have, you're just on lower hope. You're running out of hope. You're running on less hope. And some of us are like the five buckers, you know? You know, like five bucks. You stop by the gas station, what do you do? You got five bucks. Ten bucks. You know, how many times have you, you know, used to, you drive by the gas station and somebody put in five bucks, ten bucks. You see ten bucks and I'm like, God, fill her up, man. But that's all they had. That's all they could grab. That's all they could get a hold of. And so we're not full on hope. We're not full on, on who God really is. And so faith is really not present because of our awareness. And you know what's crazy is the more, uh, I love that scripture, or, uh, and I've said this, will God find faith when he returns on the earth? Will he find faith? Well, why is that even a question? Because the more aware, we, aware and self-aware we become of things, the less trusting we are. The less trusting we are of what, I mean, we were self, we're just self-aware. Google, Google, Google. You know. We're just, less, and the Lord tells us, to become like a child, become like a child, child, all right? Now, I want to, um, uh, how many of you put into practice a little bit, uh, uh, last week we had an eye exercise, what did we, what was the eye exercise? Anybody, what do we do? Did anybody do this, this week? Has anybody in the last week just uh, done that? Just like when you needed an answer, when you needed some help, when you were trying something, did anybody, does anybody just put into practice, God, thank you for peace. Thank you for help. Thank you for wisdom here. Thank you for patience. Thank you. Like whatever it might be that you need, your help. Lift up your eyes. And so, um, because, and so we talked about that, and we talked about, uh, um, so I'm now picking up from last week and why hope so important and got, knowing that God loves you in just a moment of review, lifting up your eyes, and we looked at a lock and a dam and, and how when we look down here, we can't rise above the situations of our life. When, all we're, lo- when we're limited to what we can grasp down here, we're never going to be able to get above the wall or above the obstacles of life, unless maybe hopefully somebody from above, like would open the thing and we get to pass through and go along with them because they know how it works, you know? Like if, if you're, a, if you're a, a bass boat, sometimes there'll be a larger boat and you can hop into the same thing with them and, and go along with, instead of having to wait in line, you can just hop on that same level because they're in line, you can t- carry the, and that, that water has enough power to lift the giant ship and you at the same time. So sometimes somebody else's hope, you just are you just crying out for somebody to be a hope dealer. No, I didn't say a, a a dope dealer. I said a hope dealer. You know, where some this is how we ought to be. We ought to be like, hey, hey, a little hope dealer. We just got this is gum. It's getting crushed. This is my wife's healthy gum. But so you might not want that. A little, but you do. You need a little hope dealer. This is how we ought to be. This is how, we, I mean, we ought to be, you know. Got, got, got a little something for you. Got a little something for you. The whole pack for you. But that's how we ought to be with hope. But, our, but I think sometimes we're far too empty to give somebody else some of ours. Like the pack. You got the pack of hope. How much hope are you and I carrying? How much hope? And we're going to see why it's so important. Because if you and I don't have hope, we don't have strong faith. If we don't have hope, we don't have strong faith. What do we have? We have just, well, we all come together in case, I don't know, just in case. In case I need some help, when, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody will reach out to me. Look at this, Psalms 121, 1 through 8. This is what we talked about. I lift up my eyes to the hills, for where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Somebody say that. My help comes from the Lord. He answered his own question. When you have questions, we have to learn to answer our own question. I just don't know how I'm, this, we're going to do this. I know how we're going to do this. The Lord is going to help us do this. I can't figure this out. I don't know. Da, 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 da. I, I just, I know where, I know how. The Lord's going to help me because he is. He doesn't have any limits. And he's a rewarder of those who just seek him. 
who, those who earnestly seek him. Lord, like in other words, I'm going to get it from him. Yeah. I'm going to get it from him because I was up in uh, the office just a moment ago uh, tonight uh, and, and, and I'm on his uh, corner desk. She says, I, I don't need Google because my father knows everything. Yeah. It's a little cup and it has all of her pens in it. I don't need Google because my father knows e- everything. Oops. You know, I, I think sometimes we would be good to, to realize that our father does know. Yeah. And, you know, you could ask him about a whole lot more things than we Google. I got a testimony about even just that just, um, uh, just recently on some extremely difficult math and angles and all kinds of stuff on laying out this curvature thing that I thought everything's right and I did it 1,800 times, pulling my hair out, making phone calls, just trying to figure it out. And I'm like, it's, just, it's easy. It, something's wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. I can't be wrong. I mean, it's this, and, and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And so last night, I went to bed after talking to another guru on the phone for an hour, okay? And still, no help, no hope. I don't know how this is going to work. I'm just going to proceed, and it's just going to cost me a lot of money on the back end. And so as I went to bed last night, I just said, Lord, thank you. Probably should have started here. And I don't even know how you're going to help me do this because I, I know you don't just speak numbers, you know, but he does. Yes. I, 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 and, and so then just worked out. I woke up in the middle of the night with the acronym and a thing and I Googled it and it's like, whoa, I, that was 12 years ago when I last, just so cool. God, all I'm just saying, if you and I will ask, if we'll just ask. If we'll just ask and say, God, I, I, I ran out of my option, A, B, and Z. Yeah, right. Like, there's not any more options. And so this is why in other countries, you miracles are just common. Because the only, only option is God or none. So either you God or you die. I think sometimes we'd be better off on some of those options. You know why? Because we would, in a time of trial, uh, what would happen is we'd have to persevere. And that persevere, we would prove the character of God. And that character, the Bible tells us that character actually produces hope. When you have character, when you know someone's character, when hope is the result. So many times we don't persevere in the fight of faith. We just go about it our own way in our first world country. And you know what that leaves? Us with a message that's hopeless. Powerless. Without the ever existing one, without limits, who actually desires to reward. So again, here we are in Psalms 121. He answers his own statement and says, uh, where does my help come from? Oh, I know where it comes from. It comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Um, so I'm lifting my eyes there. He's the maker of heaven and earth. He said, and then he, I love this. I wrote and circled and underlined. He will. He will. And so there's some declaration. He will not allow your foot. Uh, he's active. He will not allow. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not. He won't sleep. He's not sleeping. He's, he's, it just shows he's active. he's active. He's active. He's active. He's active. He will not slumber. Behold, the protector of Israel and you will neither sleep nor slumber, or slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. He is. This is what he is. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will preserve your soul, and the Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This is where we were picking up the last time beginning to have new imaginations, imagine that you're not limited. Imagine a picture of hope that you're not 
tormented with fear. Imagine that you trust your husband. Imagine that you trust your wife. Imagine that you, are, you, you have more than enough to give unto every good work. Imagine that you laugh with your kids instead of only yell at them. Imagine that you are at peace at home and you're not having to take Tums because of the stress and, and have ulcers and whatever it might be. Just imagine a new picture of hope because he loves you. Because one time, Ephesians chapter 2, you and I were without hope. But we're not without hope because Christ came. Ephesians 2, 12 and 13, Christ came. And so we're not without hope in this world anymore. We're not separated. We're not excluded. We are part of, we're grafted in. There's a covenant that you and I have. We have a, we're not foreign, foreigners. We're not on the outside. We have, let me say it this way, foreigners don't have rights in America. They don't have, they're not citizens, but we are citizens of heaven. So there's rights that we have, and that's a covenant of promise. And so now we have hope, and we have God in this world. We, don't, we are no longer on the outside looking in. We've been bought. So, so this, is, this is, again, Easter Sunday, last Wednesday, and, and this Wednesday has really been about you and I really knowing the gospel. That Jesus came and paid the price. For you and me. And, and, and there should be some hope that is carried with that. So that we can be hope dealers. Okay? That, what that looks like is this. It looks like this. He is and he will. He is and he will. So back to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Now anyone who comes to God must believe that he is and he will. So what would you say? He is and he will. So when you're up against uh, something that is bigger and there's not a cure for it, what do you say? Well, he is able to, and he will. He is, and he will. You could just put that down. You could tattoo that on something. He is, and he will. He is, and he will. And so now, when suppose you go to so-and-so, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to bring a he is, and he will in your heart you're going to get a he is and he will in your heart. You're going to let that marinate until you get the picture of who he is, the unlimited, ever-existing one, and he will. He is a rewarder. Get a he is and a he will in your... And, and you know what? This, when you and I understand he is and he will, you know what you'll do? You'll pray. You'll pray all the time. You'll pray when you see somebody. You'll just say, hey, can I just, can I just agree with you on this? I saw it seemed like you're, you're stressed out today. Can I just pray with you? Why? Because I know he is the prince of peace. And he will bring peace to that situation. Well, your family seems broken and da-da-da-da. And I just, I know it's like it's hopeless and all this kind of stuff. Well, I know he is the God of hope. And I know that he is the one who takes and restores what the worm has eaten. Now, I don't know if you've ever done anything with like sweet corn and you, you know, husk the cob. You know, and, and you open it, and there's worm there, and there's no more cob. There's just a bunch of stuff, and that's when your life is just somebody's life is just filled with a bunch of stuff. God can work there. You know why? Because He is without limits, and He will reward those two things. Is what you, positions you and I to receive a word from God and partner with his word that comes from here and bring it here. But we can't. So many times we're not because we're looking here and we're looking here instead of lifting our eyes and saying, he is and he will. He is where my help comes from and he will. This is what it takes to preach Jesus. Otherwise, you just might as well be quiet. Because you always just be wondering, well, God, I just don't know if you are or if you will. Or if when, oh, praise the Lord. I've had dreams that I've walked off of this thing before and like just bit it, you know? <laughs> like sometimes you'll pray and you'll close your eyes and you're like, you know, anyway, praise the Lord. Look, listen to this. Listen to Matthew chapter 7 because sometimes I think like we think, well, that's just, let's just, let's just, let's just put ourselves here again. Matthew 7, 7. This is Jesus talking. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Well, I did that one time, and I didn't get an answer. So I've stopped knocking. You got robbed of your hope? Is what happened? So you're now hopeless. You're isolated. You're without help, without hope in this world. That's a terrible place to be. He says, but, and so then he's trying to appeal to you, which of you, which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? So if you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good to those, good, give good, a big black bear bit, bit a big black bug and a big black, okay, all right. How much wood, okay. How much, <laughs> Give good, yeah. God gives good gifts. Golly gee. To those ask him. In everything, then, now I'm going back. We're going back, then. This is why it's so important for you to ask and for you to be aware of it. Matthew chapter 7, and what we're talking about, he is and he will. Because he says this uh, in verse 12, in everything then, do to others. Oh, you know, we always hear this is the golden rule. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the essence of the law and the prophets. He says, hey, would you ask for somebody? This is important. That you and I, as the church, as one sent by the Lord to serve our generation, that you and I would ask for somebody. Ask the Lord. That you and I would seek and we would knock. Why? Because you're not without hope in this world. You have have a he is and a he will. You have a, a God who did not spare his own son. This is the message of salvation. And so now what you carry when you go, you carry the name of the existing one who is and who will. That's the message, the good news. When you look at Luke where he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the good news. You'll find that when he, what he declares is a bunch of he is and he will. Of what God can do and what God does, what the, the ability is unlimited. His good news is not just that, well, one day you're going to get to heaven. He said, I can change that and I can restore that and I can redeem that and I can bring this back and I can heal that. That's the good news. And somehow we've settled. And we've settled because of our awareness, we've settled because of self love and fear of man. And we've settled because of somewhere, somehow, some prayer, some ask. We didn't keep asking. We just kind of, well, well, we did. We kept asking. You don't even know how many times I asked. Okay, well, why did you stop? Well, 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 the Bible, there's a lot of parables on there. Just keep, keep on that. Keep on knocking. Keep on asking. Keep on knocking. Even in the middle of the night, keep on asking, keep on knocking. Why do we stop? Well, they're not home. No answer. <laughs> so it looks like this. Um, I've, so many times, uh, this is where we, we, we reside, and this is where you and I could be honest with ourselves. I thought he would versus I know he does. It, where am I at? Where are you at? This is where, like, even in our, in, in our small groups, when we're in these places where someone could come alongside and give you a little, you know, a little dope. I mean, a little hope. <laughs> a little hope. A little what God, who God is. Why? Because the storm is not all around them at the moment. And so they have, uh, they have the word uh, without the wave. Or they may have tested that word on the wave. And here, here we are uh, in the middle of a storm, and just like the, 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 
the disciples are, he said, let us go to the other side. But the wind and the waves came up. And when it says, when it got into the boat, when the waves came over into the boat, that's when they began to question, does God really love me? Does he even, do you even care? Do you even care that we're going to drown? What's attacked, again, because faith comes from the word of God, but hope is built on the character of God. And this is why the enemy comes so often to attack, to attack the character of God. If you and I don't believe that he is and that he is a rewarder, this is his goodness. Did God really say? Does God really? This is back in the garden. The picture that Adam had in his heart was not one that God was for him. He allowed the enemy to paint a different one. Let's keep going here. Romans chapter 15, 1 through 13. And, and I'm just, again, faith as a child is killed by self-awareness. What we're, what, where, where, where we go and we look at the tree and we go take and we take a look and we, what do we think? And I, I don't know about you, but we're very limited. As much as you might, and I think we might know, we know like this much. The portion of the brain even, even the brain. And by the way, you're a three-part being, okay? So just if you're using your brain, even if you use 90% of that and you're, you're limited on some of the other part, you're still only, you know, at 30% maybe. How about your spirit? How much of your spirit are you using? We always talk about the knowledge. Let's talk about, oh, all right. But anyway, um, so again, self-awareness. All right, Romans chapter 15, 1 through 13. We're going to get to verse 13, but I, I thought this was really, really, really important, really good. It says, we then are... Uh, that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Hmm. Kind of sounds like Acts chapter 13. David served. So like, you, this is great. You want some hope? You want to enjoy your days? Right here. H help somebody. Amen. Reach out and bring a he is and he will. A he is and he will. And here's what I can do. And here's my part, right? How many of you know, you and I, there's always our part. There's always our seed. There's always our part. He says, we are strong out to bear the failings of the weak and not, and, not, and not just to please ourselves. We're going to go all the way through verse 13. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. Like, wow, what does it look like to just be a witness, to preach Jesus, to bring the message of the good news? This is what Paul, not, yeah, Paul, yeah, Paul is talking to the Romans and he's saying, hey guys, this is how we ought to live. This is what we need to be about. You're strong? Help somebody. We not just be about our own stuff. For even Christ did not come to please himself. But as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. Keep on going. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the, endur uh, the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So he's, he's saying everything that we've seen, the, all of this word is for hope. You bring hope, and even what was written to you was so it could bring you hope. You bring hope, What God's bringing hope. Jesus brought hope. Next verse. And make the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that G Christ Jesus had towards you. So he's like, hey, just as Jesus helped you, you do what you, do what you can to help others. Bring some hope. Yeah. Like, has anybody ever had somebody hand them a $100 bill? I got Philip here, Philip Parker. I remember being a young man traveling back and forth, uh, going to Bible school, and there's a sound booth right there. And I, I remember a few different times where he would give me a, a knuckle or a handshake and have a $100 bill in there, and I'm thinking, bro, you don't even know what... That just helped me do to get home. You don't even know what that did. What that did is, God heard me. God is hearing a lot of prayers. And God is moving on the hearts of a lot of people. We're just too busy, self-consumed, self-satisfied. The church, the hands, the feet of who? In this world. So this is how we ought to live. So what's the point of even church? Well, 
to be beyond the four walls. Sometimes we forget that it's time we need to have a name change and be beyond church. We need to be a church that's outside of our four walls, that we exist with a message of good news, with a he is and a he will and I can everywhere I go. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Not just, well, well uh, there's these people that had this uh, fire and, uh, and so I was just I wanted to let you know about that to see if the church could write a check for a few hundred dollars. Uh, you got, what do you got? What do we got? What can we, this is big. You talk about seeing God move, seeing God move, you're gonna have, and I are going to have to make a demand and move ourselves. Yeah, that's right. And know that when I move, we move. Not just when I say we move, he moves with me. He doesn't leave me. He doesn't forsake me. He's my shield. He's my help. He's my strength. I don't know how we're going to do this, but I know how we're going to do this. The Lord, is, I'm going to lift my eyes. I, I know how. And we're going to step out in faith. What does it mean to step out in faith? He is and he will. He is and he will. Oh, thank you, Lord. I love this. He says, uh, act like this towards uh, one another the same way that Jesus acted to you. Verse 6, that you may be with one mind. And this this this, this verse just so went off in me for for, for this is what we're doing. Like, this is what Wednesday night and Sunday, and this is what we've become. We're just like of one mind, the same mind of Christ. Like, what God wants to do to the world and for the world and, and help and heal and, and whole and call them at things that, that be not as though they are and call, out, call them what God calls them. and call, Like, you, they can't see it. They can't, they, but, but, but it, bringing it about, and they, instead of saying, sure is dark, sure are, worth, sure are this. No, instead we say, man, I love your heart. And you speak to the core to what you can't see. You speak from, from here and you partner with the Lord. And, and, and you speak from a he is and a he will. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So that you being a one mind and one voice, you might glorify the God and the Father. That You know God gets glory like that. Wherefore you receive, receive you one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. I closed last week saying, I wish there was somebody that would cuss at me in church. You know, and that wasn't really what I was saying. Just so y'all know. What I was saying is, where are the, where are the young, where are the new believers? Where are the ones that are, are where are the babes in Christ? So the uh, next verse, verse 7. Accept one another then. Yeah, they just don't have it all. Just as Christ accepted you. Wow. In order to bring praise to God, you're in my celebration, not just like tolerance, but truly like, man, it brings praise to God. Oh, yeah. Keep it going here. Verse 8. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed. Next verse. And, more, and moreover, now he's that for the Gentiles, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. So he's, if you were to see a heading in, in your Bible, it would say, God, Jesus Christ serving the Jews and the Gentiles. This is what this, this, is, what this is talking about. His mer- uh, the, the Gentiles, that we would glorify God. Why? Because we get everything together? No, because of his mercy, or his, if this was Hebrew, it would be his seed, which is covenant loyalty. We glorify God because he kept his covenant with us. When we were faithless, he remained faithful. So you can be faithful or full of faith. He's not, and he goes on, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. This is Paul saying, again it says, rejoice you Gentiles with his people. Verse 11, again, praise the Lord all you Gentiles. Let all the people, 
extol him. Let us give him praise because he's faithful. Let us give him praise because he is and he will. This is when we come together. God, we worship. I worship you. You're so good. You're so good. Someone's like, I just don't know. And somebody's like, well, he is. He is and he will. He, well, he is and he will. And somebody like, well, well, how did that work? Well, he is and he will. Okay, he will. He is and he will. He is and he will. He is and he will. All of a sudden, it changes you. You just, the current pulls you right in. Next verse, 12 and then 13. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will, what? Hope. You know what that is? You'll have a picture of good. You're going to have a picture of, of, let me say it this way, that holds, no matter what you see out here, you have a picture in your heart that holds the character of God of, that says he is and he will. So no matter what you see, I know he is and he will. I can rejoice because he's faithful. He keeps his covenant. Now, may the God of hope, may the God of hope, the God who he brings good news, he is the God of hope. He is, that's who he is. He is the one who says, I, this is who I am. Would you believe it? Would you believe that I am, that he is, and that I am a rewarder? The God of hope he said, fill you with all joy and peace in believing. How do you get joy and peace when it happens? Now it's called happiness. Where do you get joy and hope? Believing. If you don't have joy and you don't have hope, it's because you don't believe. It's because you don't have faith. Why? Because you're just too aware of all these other things. You don't believe that he is any or he will. One of those two is shaken. And so you're robbed of joy, and you're robbed of peace. And guess what? He says this. He says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace uh, and peace, as you trust in him, or in believing, this NIV, as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The hope that you and I are to carry is not just for me. Yeah. I, my hope isn't just for me. Yeah. It's supposed to do like this. It's just to overflow. Some of it says it would abound so that you may abound with hope. You know what that means? Over here, some hope. When you're out, oh, over here, some hope. You see somebody that's hopeless, and God, my God supplies all my needs. And I know, hey, that, that person looks like they're struggling. You know what? I, I know I was going to go out to eat right here, but you know what? Romans chapter 15, verse 1, it said, you're strong. You can go get you spend your hundred dollars at El Trio right now. You can go do that. But you know what? Hey, honey, I just wanted you to know Jesus loves you. And I want to get those groceries for you. You know what they experienced? God. We're seeing, we're seeing people's prayers. Far too often. And we're not responding because we've been robbed of hope. Of a he is and a he will. And we are more aware of what we can't or we're self-consumed. I'm talking to me. I'm talking about living a life for just for the glory of God. Yeah, he's given us all things richly to enjoy. Absolutely. But I can, can I tell you, better is, oh, you want to you wanna, you wanna enjoy life? So. So. So not, not, not just to your friends that can sew back. Go sew to somebody that can't do nothing for you. And you'll find that they did more for you than you could ever have done to your, for yourself. Because you know why? You listen to your spirit. You listen. And because you listen to your spirit and you responded, you sewed to the spirit. And guess where you're going to draw from then? From the spirit. And you know, we're drawn so much right here from here. 
Because we're sowing, we're aware of what's going on here. We're here. And we wonder why we're limited. Because we're sowing here instead of sowing there or from here. And so we're, our believing is based on what we see here instead of what we see here. Here on earth as it is in heaven. If you're going to ever pray that, if you're ever going to pray that, you're going to have to look what it looks like in heaven. In order to do that, we're going to have to put our eyes. And how do we put our eyes? What did we say last, last week? Words turn our head. And this is why it's so important to come and, and, and hear the word because the word of God is the truth that sets men free, that equips us uh, for works of righteousness. It uh, changes the point of our face, uh, lifts our eyes, and look to him instead of just ourselves. Yeah. If, I was, if I was walking over here and Kyle called my name, it would turn my head. Words turn our heads. It changes where we're going to draw from. And so this is all we're talking about, why, why two Sundays ago and this last Wednesday and coming into small group was so important and what I would love and my heart desires is just the Holy Spirit message that has been imparted into you and into you and into you, into that group, whether if there's five or 25 people and you got to break into small group within a small group, guys and girls split up, whatever. You talk about the love of God. The, the, uh, the power of God. If, if, God, if he loves me and he would not, wasn't, he, would, he, he would spare, he, would, he was not willing to spare his own son, but gave him up freely for us, what also would he not do for us? Guys, we need, our, we need to pray bigger prayers. We need, to, we need to pray. I see people buying lottery tickets more than they pray a prayer for somebody in a wheelchair. Odds? More hope in the Powerball numbers being revealed to us than calling on the name of the Lord for salvation in a moment and trusting that he is and he will. This is just a, you know how you and I, um, faith comes? By hearing and hearing and hearing. And this is what I love even just as, as you come together in small groups, you get to hear testimonies of God's faithfulness. I could sit up here and tell you testimony after testimony of God's provision in my life as a young man and, and, and continually how, we, how I didn't know how I was going to. And he come through and he come through and he preserved and he restored. And God, amen, amen. There, there's just, there's so, there's so much. Um, <laughs> The, the, the verse 13, uh, he says this, uh, this out of the BSB. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power. Let me say this, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive, Acts chapter 1, and you shall receive power to be witnesses. What's this power? Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power is tied and is released, let me say it this way, as you and I testify or witness. But you and I will not testify, and you and I will not witness when you and I hope less. This verse right here, verse 13, abound, overflow with hope, overflow with hope, by with hope, the picture of good. Someone now can see, they can see the character of God yeah. by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you will receive power to witness. Can I tell you that so many times you and I are just so close to turning the valve of just overflow and goodness in our lives if you and I would just witness. Dope dealer. I'm mean, hope, hope dealer. Hope dealer. Be a hope dealer. Now, I'm not saying go get a bunch of hope or, you know, make money by dope. I'm saying be a hope dealer. Hope is a vision thing. It's based on where your head is turned. Praise the Lord. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you find yourself, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, when you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over the story. This is in the message. You find yourself flagging in your faith? Go over the picture. Go over the story. This is Hebrews chapter 12, 3 out of the message, it says this. When you find yourself flagging your faith, go over the story again, item by item. Make sure you didn't miss anything. 
that long litany of hostility that Jesus plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls, into your... If he was not willing to spare his own son, wow, what will he not also freely give to you and me? Glory to God. So faith, again, is attached to his word, but hope is attached to his mercy, to his character, to his goodness. The Lord is good, and because he's good, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. We would have been consumed if it wasn't for his faithfulness, but instead his mercies are new for you and me. His kindness, his covenant loyalty is new to you and me every morning. God, he wants to be good. God wants to be good all the time. And he said, would you be good? Would you yield to what I want to do? Would you look for a word from here and bring it with a he is and a he will? Why? Because he loves me. Well, just because he loves me? Because he loves you. And only when I have that so clear in my heart as the church can I share that with somebody else. He loves you. You value him. You, you, it's for the praise and the glory of God. You're strong so you can help somebody that's bearing it. Man, that's what we're here for. That's what we're doing. Let's stand tonight. Thank you, Lord. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Lord. I'm going to take a drink real quick. So. Um, before service tonight, and we're going to close, uh, but before service tonight, I had somebody reach out to me and said, hey, you know, um, sometimes you would close service and you'd say, if you need healing in your body or um, things like that, and it's, it's just, I've, I've been hoping for that or just I was hoping tonight you would do that. And I said, um, I love that you said that. Thank you for saying that. Like just even just that you're expecting, you desire to, for healing in your body. And you can have that. I said, do you think I could have that tonight? I said, well, yeah, you can have that anytime. But I love that your heart is that. I said, that's the Lord saying that, that, yeah, that's a knocking. And you're responding. So I think that's awesome. So we're going to close tonight um, the same way we would with, with family. And that's even, again, what church is. Church is family. And so if somebody has a need, we just reach out. If somebody's hurting, you extend your hand to heal. If somebody's needing healing in their body, you release a he is and a he will. And so we're going to close tonight uh, like that. And so um, <clears throat> here's what I want to do. If you need healing in your body, I want you to come up and we're going to lay hands on you. So we are going to lay hands on you. But if you feel impressed in your heart to also lay hands, like I want to pray, I want to, you know, I want to lay hands on them as well then I'm going to say, that's what we're going to do. That's, how, that's what this is going to look like. So if you need healing in your body, um, we're just going to take a moment. We're going to lay hands on, on, on the sick, uh, anybody that needs healing, and just come on up here. And then if you feel impressed, like, yeah, I want to lay hands on them, and I want to bring my he is and he will alongside that, um, we're going to do that. Okay? So come on up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He is and he will. And so this is just, I just sense the, uh, the pleasure of God to just, a he is and a he will moment tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So have you come or and anyone, as, you see, as we just go down, you can just lay. I mean, I think this is so cool. This is family. And what we're saying is, um, if there's faith the size of a mustard seed, he said, you'll say to it, to that mountain and be cast into the sea. But he said, but if you do not doubt in your heart. So I'm not asking every person to come up here. To, I'm saying, a he is and a he will. He is and a he will. And you're going to find that, you're going to see, what you'll see is just testimonies. God did this for me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's start right here. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Wholeness in this body.
special in the day of the day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise to the Lord. Next week, next Wednesday will be Small Group Wednesday. So if you're not signed up in a small group, uh, please join one. Bring your supply. Just like we read in Romans 15, bring a supply. Be a pillar. Be a strength. Be The church is the pillar of truth here on this earth. It's the one, we're the ones. We're the ones that are carrying the message of the good news of the gospel. God's for you. God's for you, not against you. And he is, and he will. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you guys Sunday.